the abbreviation XL that has set the teeth on edge in the case of the Mitsubishi crossover is not far-fetched. The second-generation Outlander has really grown in size and become more complex. Has it affected reliability? Outlander XL, which debuted in Russia in 2007, was accepted by buyers with a bang. In its price range, he put competitors on the blades with rich equipment and a powerful engine. The model sold well in other countries, but in our secondary market there are practically no copies from abroad, with the exception of right-hand drive versions. On Russian XL, you can find two options for gasoline engines. The first is V6 3.0L, 220 horsepower. The second is the 4 2.4L, 170 horsepower. 6 is combined only with the 6-speed automatic transmission. A modern, automatic, with manual switching and well-implemented engine braking is a reliable unit. With a 2.4-liter engine, both a manual transmission and a variator were installed. As for the power units, there are no complaints about them. Moreover, for their high power they are quite economical. Moreover, with a 2.4-liter engine, with a quiet ride without standing in traffic jams, the average fuel consumption is 10 to 11 liters per hundred. For a crossover, this is a worthy result. Of course, the 3-liter version is more voracious, but within the bounds of decency. It should be noted that in the drive of the gas distribution mechanism of the 4, an almost eternal chain is used, while for the V6 with a run of 90,000 kilometers, a scheduled replacement of the timing belt is provided. The most expensive trouble from among the well-known servicemen happened to the variator, and the reason for this is by no means a rock design. No, everything is much more prosaic. Even in a nightmare, Japanese engineers could not imagine what dirty roads their offspring would have to drive on. They, naive children of civilization, decided that the air from the front wheel arch would cool the variator radiator well. However, even on public roads, dirt also flies from there, and sometimes the radiator clogged with it does not cope with its mission. As a result, overheating and often full Hiroshima in the filling of the variator. The manufacturer considers this unit to be non-reparable and offers a new unit costing from 400,000 rubles. True, on all warranty copies, the variator was changed for free. Since 2008, the design of the fender liner, in which the air intake hole is located, has been changed, radically eliminating this problem. Four-wheel drive from a series of inexpensive, but high-quality implemented solutions. An electronically controlled clutch is installed in front of the rear axle differential. In normal mode, all the torque goes to the front wheels. In auto mode, the rear wheels are connected by electronics. In lock mode, the clutch is locked. There is almost no clutch breakdown due to the control unit, which simply turns it off when it overheats. The off-road capabilities of the crossover model are quite good. Under the bottom there is nothing frankly sticking out and easily damaged. That's just a full-size spare tire, located in the rear overhang, somewhat limits the geometric cross. By the way, due to a full-fledged spare wheel, Outlander XL is not available on our market with a third row of seats. While its twins Peugeot 4007 and Citroën C-Crosser boast a seven-seat interior, paying for it with a Dokatka. The McPherson-type front suspension and the rear multi-link scheme performed well. There is, however, one but. You have no idea how many shock absorbers were replaced under warranty. Moreover, only 5 to 10 percent of the cars arrived with really leaky struts, the rest of the shock absorbers were just fogged and still fully functional. But to maintain a reputation, these details were changed by official services without question. Wheel bearings, this typical consumable for crossovers, are a long playing in XL, and replacing them up to 100 to 120,000 kilometers is a rarity. When buying a version with a 3-liter engine, you need to be prepared for the fact that you will often have to spend money on brake discs and pads. Approximately 30,000 kilometers, this is often the entire life of the front discs, and the pads are even less. Tuning kits solve the issue, but not radically. Of course, there are exceptions, but in general, here the picture corresponds to the average temperature in the hospital, taking into account the morgue. Many complaints were associated with the radio, which did not hold radio frequencies. Having lost the signal, the system began to search for the next ethereal wave, which for obvious reasons annoyed the owners very much. The malfunction was eliminated by a new firmware of the control unit. Bluetooth failures are known, and here the control module had to be changed to restore the device's performance. Another trouble is related to the peculiarities of the Russian climate. The amplifier block of the music system, located under the driver's seat, 
failed due to water. How did she get there? Elementary, usually it was melted snow, brought either on shoes or by the wind through an open door during a snowstorm. Experts also note breakdowns associated exclusively with abnormally low temperatures, for example, failures of the stove motor or failure of CB joints. By the way, owners from the northern regions complain that the outside air thermometer does not know what below minus 30 degrees Celsius means. Let's take their word for it. If the air conditioner does not work, then poplar fluff is to blame in most cases. A small space between the main radiator and the radiator of the air conditioner is clogged with fluff, then dust settles on it, and after moisture gets there, it all turns into a dense crust. It is unlikely that it will be possible to return the former cleanliness to radiators without dismantling them. As you can see, the Outlander XL has virtually no design weaknesses, and all sorts of troubles are the result of operating on a part of what was once proudly called one-sixth of the land.